Hello and welcome to The Property Show. I'm Vasudha Sharma joining you on the West Edition. If you want to buy a house to live in or just invest in real estate, we'll cover locations across the West region from Mumbai, Navi Mumbai, Thane, Pune, Nashik to Ahmedabad and many more. Please welcome our expert in the studio, Samir Jasuja, founder and MD of Prop Equity. Coming up on The Property Show, Maharashtra unlocks its no development zones to build affordable housing with foreign funding. Mumbai's suburban destinations to buy a home for residential use in two crores. For specific budgets, we'll scout Navi Mumbai for locations and best projects. Thane's Godbanda Road, why buy property here and what are the top projects along this popular corridor? Budget to mid-segment housing options in Pune's Kharadi, Handewadi and Baner within 40 to 80 lakhs. And what will it take to break the standoff between buyers and real estate companies? A mood check of what home buyers want from developers this Diwali. Okay, we'll discuss markets of Mulun, Borivali, Gansoli and Saloja in just a bit. Maharashtra's affordable housing plans, meanwhile, seem to have received a major boost. The state government plans to open the no-development zones that include even defence land to build affordable homes. They're also planning to source foreign capital to fund the affordable housing programme. Nikhil Narayan Shivadas reports. Much like the central government, the Maharashtra government too has an ambitious plan to provide housing for all with a target of 11 lakh homes to be built by 2020. While that sounds impressive in speeches and announcements, the big question that the real estate sector has been asking is, where will the land come from? The state government seems to have taken the first step to address that issue by partnering with the Defence Ministry. This is significant since the Defence Ministry lays claim to large plots of land in prime areas of the city. Similar arrangements are being considered with other central government agencies including the Railways and the Airports Authority of India. Experts say this also sets a precedent for other state governments across the country to help unlock hundreds of acres of land for development. The r Railway Authorities of India are, are, are sitting on almost uh, 4.2 uh, lakh hectares of land. The Defence, on the other hand, is sitting on 17 lakh acres of land. The Mumbai Port uh, authority, the Port Trust is another example, 350 acres of prime land in Mumbai. Um, so these are all just numbers I'm throwing, just these numbers alone are staggering. Here the government is looking at global capital coming in, with talks ongoing with several sovereign fund houses to fund the program. In fact, according to Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis, at least one big ticket investment is already on the cards. A week back, Canadian ambassador came to me and we had a discussion and he informed me that the Canadian pension fund is ready to invest $2 billion in Mumbai for affordable housing. With this, the state government seems to be on track with its plan to provide housing for all. But while land and funding seems to be sorted, there is still concern on how the program will be executed. Experts are divided on the issue, with some saying the government should handle the development themselves through agencies like MADA without involving private builders to ensure that only affordable housing comes here. On the other hand, some experts believe the inclusion of private builders will help unlock the true value of land. It ensures that the government gets uh, recurring revenue in terms of taxes uh, once such economic value is unlocked through uh, commercial development or high-end um, uh, uh, high residences. While the government considers those plans, it is essential that the opportunities brought about by unlocking the land in these zones are not lost as in the case of the lower parel mill lands 
earlier this decade. From Mumbai, Nikhil Narayan Shivdas, NDTV. All right, so the Maharashtra government trying to carve out new land passes within Mumbai and MMR from the no-development zones. Now, also crucial to this affordable housing effort will be redevelopment, and in a significant win for the private sector effort, Rustamji Developers has won the mandate to redevelop South Mumbai's 33-acre Abhyudaya Nagar. This will be one of the biggest cluster redevelopment projects in Mumbai. Abhyudaya Nagar is made up of 48 housing societies, 26 of which voted in favour of Rustamji Developers, who was competing for the bid against Tata Housing, Omkar and DV Realty. Since the inception of this cluster redevelopment scheme in 2009, only two projects have been approved and executed, the Bhindi Bazaar program and the Avagnya redevelopment scheme. Okay, moving to our Q&As. Uh, first up on the show, we have Mihir Rajgor with a question. Mihir, go ahead, please. Hi, I want to buy a 3BHK uh, and I don't want to go beyond Chembur, Ghatkopar or Muland in central Mumbai and even beyond Malad in western Mumbai. I'm not evaluating Navi Mumbai and beyond that area and my budget is uh, around 1.70 crores. And uh, please suggest a property and uh, should also, should I go for a flat without having OC? Uh, please suggest something which suits me and, uh, and that, yeah. Okay, so looking for a property in Mulun and we absolutely do not recommend that you go ahead and invest in a property without an OC. Uh, without an OC, it means the property is not livable, not worth living. Uh, an OC contains all the NOCs for fire, safety, lifts, structural safety, uh, water, sewage treatment and you need to make sure that you move into a property which is worth living and safe to live in. Samir, in Mulund, in 1.7 crores, what are the options for him? So first of all, just to add what you say, just one more thing. OC means occupation certificate, which means fit for occupation. So that should be an absolute must for any project uh, that you uh, plan to live into. You'd also shortlisted a project called Mangaldeep Apartments uh, and uh, the same challenge there that the OC is not there in place. Uh, there is talk of the top three floors uh, not having been cleared by the departments, although some families are staying there, but uh, not recommended. Uh, that's why the apartments also going uh, slightly cheap. If you look at the varied average price of Monon East and Monon West, it's uh, 12,350 and 12,800 respectively, Monon West being the higher. Uh, but this project is trading at 10,000 rupees a square foot, so there has to be reasons for that. Uh, looking at the micro markets that you've uh, suggested, uh, we've shortlisted Mulund East and Mulund West for you, where inventory overhang seems to be exceedingly safe uh, for the mid segment. 13 months for Mulund East and 11 months for Mulund West. Uh, the weighted average price I've already mentioned for the mid segment, and the price appreciation is roughly about 9.5% for Mulund East and 10.5% for Mulund West. The three projects that you can consider are Send Roofs by Neelam Realtors at 13,500 rupees. It consists of three towers uh, of G plus 18 stories uh, located at uh, Nanpada Road near East West Flyover Mulund East. Uh, amenities include banquet hall, swimming pool, clubhouse, mini theatre. Deliver developers delivered quite a few projects in Mumbai. Zenith by Gundecha Builders at 12,350 rupees a square foot. Again available from the resale market as it's uh, a ready project since 2014. Amenities uh, are decent uh, over here, clubhouse is there, gym is there, indoor games, rock garden, swimming pool. Zenith A is ready for with possession with OC and Zenith B is under construction over here. Ranwal Greens uh, in Mulund West, this is uh, phase one has four towers which will be ready by December 2015 and the others will get ready by December 2017. It's being designed by a German-renowned architect uh, and uh, this project has got an easy access to Mumbai via Eroli Bridge as well and spread across seven odd acres, uh, not too many amenities to speak of. Okay, Mihir, so we're giving you projects uh, which are ready for possession or in the final stages of construction. You can look at uh, Sen Roofs by Neelam Realtors. There is Zenith by Gundecha Builders. This one is ready for possession and also with an occupation certificate. You can also look at Runwal Greens by the Runwal Groups. Group all three reputed names in the local market. Now with us online on the show is Sanat Pancholi. Hi Sanat, where would you like to invest? Good afternoon, how are you? We are doing well sir, how can we help you? Uh, I am looking for the 2 BHK flat in Borivali East or Borivali West. My budget is up to the 2 crores and I am not in a hurry. I can wait up to the 2 to 5 years time. 
So I want a building like a not a standalone or maybe small club or some something like a gym or swimming pool, something like that. All right. So Borivali, two crores, one and a half to two crores, uh, looking at a well-developed society with all amenities in place. Sameer. So we would recommend uh, to you to consider Borivali East. Uh, the micro market now is completely secondary in nature with all the social infrastructure quite well in place. Uh, looking at the inventory overhang, uh, slowdown definitely persists at uh, 27 months of inventory overhang. But believe me, inventory overhang in many other places in Mumbai is far more. Uh, so this is seeming to be relatively okay. At, in these times that we are living in, mid-segments, uh, weighted average price being 13,600. And price appreciation continues to be pretty strong here at 11% odd on an analyzed basis. The projects that you can consider are Kanakia Aroha. This is in uh, Borivali East, uh, spread across 1.4 acres. The, all the projects are getting ready by 2017 and they can get uh, easily uh, extended to uh, 2018 also. Project is 900 meters from Borivali Railway Station and 600 meters from the Western Express Highway. Developer has got a good track record, having delivered quite a few projects in Mumbai. Uh, project has good amenities also, a gym, clubhouse, cricket pitch, theme park and a children's play area. And then we have Rivali Park of Wintergreen by G Corp. Again, a reputed developer uh, out of Mumbai. Uh, this is being designed by an US-based firm. Building plans are in place uh, and uh, the project is uh, a huge project with 700 uh, apartments, 1.5 kilometers from the Borivali railway station. And uh, this project boasts of amenities like swimming pool, gym, tennis court, even uh, a mini theater, multi-purpose hall, yoga areas. So all in all, a lot of amenities and also an IGBC certified building. Sangvi Solitaire, Borivali is 13 and a half thousand rupees. Project here comes with only basic amenities. De developers delivered few projects, although in MMR and the project is only 300 meters away from Western Express Highway and 600 meters from the Borivali railway station. So, so the location is pretty good, keeping in mind the connectivity. And construction has already started. A fourth floor uh, slab work is in progress right now. Samir, Mr. Pancholi seems to be an investor. He's willing to wait it out for four, five years. Uh, in this particular location, Borivali is, uh, would he see appreciation in these uh, recommended projects? Uh, well, I think the price points uh, in these uh, western suburbs and eastern suburbs of Mumbai have reached to a point where, you know, markets have become slightly unaffordable. And that's why you're witnessing uh, a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, one is hopeful that prices can appreciate as much as the inflation. But having an expectation over the next two years, uh, higher than that would be, I think, uh, a stretch. Okay, so Sanat, Mr. Pancholi, uh, we are giving you some options in Borivali East. Most of these recommendations are in the middle stage of construction to be ready by 2017. Uh, located very well, close to infrastructure like malls, educational institutes, banks, hotels, hospitals. Uh, take a look at Kanakia Aroha by Kanakia Spaces. We also have Rivali Park Winter Green by G Corp and Sangvi Solitaire by Sangvi Group. Ellen Mishra writes us this email. I want a 2 BHK in any good project for end use in Ghansoli or Kopar Kherane, Nabi Mumbai within 1.4 crores. If I don't get any nice new option, then I will think uh, to go for second hand purchase. Uh, please advise. See, uh Mr. Uh, Mishra's one requirement was also that he wanted to look at only primary projects directly available with the developer and not going to the resale market. Uh, projects in Kupar um, Kharane uh, are almost sold out, so we've recommended you Gansoli, which is an equally good micro market uh, and uh, quite affordable. The weighted average price of Gansoli is 9390, and Kupar Kharane gets to be a little even more higher at 10,600 rupees a square foot, making that micro market a little even unaffordable for your requirement. Inventory overhang for this micro market safe below the danger zone at 23 months, mid to luxury segment still trading at about 9300 rupees a square foot. And 10 odd percent analyzed price appreciation is what is being witnessed in this micro market over the last two and a half years. Uh, we're looking at uh, three projects for you Chandamunda uh, Heights by Chamunda Infrastructures. This is a standalone tower. Uh, project has got basic amenities only, no clubhouse, no swimming pool. Keep that in mind. Uh, located near 1.2 kilometers from the ASP Convent School and 1.8 kilometers from the Tilak International School. Then we have Signature Heights, uh, uh, project is a standalone building again, uh, bare minimum amenities. It's a CIDCO transfer plot with approvals in place in Sector 8. 
and two kilometers from the Ghansoli railway station. Lastly, we have Calista by Shakti Developers at eight and a half thousand rupees a square foot. It's the cheapest amongst the three options. This project is offering a gym, uh, and that's about it. Uh, construction is complete. Exterior work is going on, and projects targeting uh, to give uh, possession by 2016. It's a standalone building again, and it's a residential come commercial project. All right, so Mr. Mishra, in Ghansoli, you will find uh, properties priced at an average price of ninety-three hundred rupees per square foot. Uh, we're giving you these three options: Chamunda Heights by Chamunda Infrastructures, Signature Heights by Pyramid Infratech, and Calista by Shakti Developers. Manish Varma on the line with us now. Hi, Manish. How can we help you? Hi, uh, I was uh, watching the NDTV show and it is very good. And uh, I just wanted for the investment purpose, uh, uh, which area will be the best? Is it Mira Road, or Taloja, or Panvir? Okay, and your budget was Manish? Uh, I am uh, seeking for uh, one BHK, two numbers, fifty uh, lakhs. Fifty lakhs, one uh, BHK. Navi Mumbai should you go for Taloja or any other location? Uh, Samir, what are your options? Well, there has to be, you know, a budget to support that as well. To look at uh, more lived-in micro markets, okay. uh, with a 50 lakh budget, Taloja seems to be the best bet over there. Uh, inventory overhang being a little bit of a cause of concern, but not too much at 26 odd months. Uh, you have 4400 rupees on the weighted price chart uh, for the mid segment, which is uh, very affordable. I would say nine uh, odd percent annualized price appreciation. And the three projects that you can consider are SM Plaza by Platinum Group at forty-five hundred rupees, standalone tower of G plus three thirteen stories. Developers have developed uh, in Hayat and NSU project in Navi Mumbai. Amenities include clubhouse, gym, children's play area. Then we have Arihant uh, Anayka by Arihant Superstructures at forty-two uh, hundred. There's a special Diwali offer going on right now, which you, you can get one kg silver free for every booking till Diwali. Uh, amenities here include swimming pool, clubhouse. Uh, developers delivered quite a few projects. It's a 7.5 acre project with uh, 19 buildings. Uh, lastly, we have Vasani Heritage by Vasani Group. Uh, again, at 4,500, it's 800 meters with um, uh, spread across 800 meters. This project is a standalone building. Project comes with only basic amenities. Uh, developer has delivered two more projects in Khargar and Taloja, and it's 2.5 kilometers from the Taloja railway station and two kilometers from the national school. Okay, uh, Samir, I believe affordable prices is the USP of Taloja. What else is driving demand here? Well, uh, it's also being developed by Sitco, and Sitco has uh, got a, now a good reputation that which, uh, whenever it carves out uh, a micro market, it, right. it does a recently good job. In addition to that, a flyover between Khargar and Tal to Taloja Phase Two is under construction, which will improve the connectivity of this area okay. quite a bit. Uh, and the Navi Mumbai Metro Corridor, which is also in construction. Uh, will add to the connectivity. Connectivity factor. Okay, so Manish, in Taloja, we have uh, three options that Samir recommends that you can look at: SM Plaza by Platinum Group, Arihant Anayka by Arihant Superstructures, and Vasani Heritage by Vasani Group. Now, Maharashtra's real estate industry body, MCHI Credi. held their annual property expo recently developers were out in full force to impress potential home buyers with offers and discounts but what is the mood among home seekers are the fence sitters still waiting for prices to correct ashwini priyolkar reports mchi credit's property expo was held in mumbai over the weekend at a time when sales are down and unsold stock is rising The expo hopes to spur buyer interest. We have a great expectation, and people are absolutely responding to it. And we are seeing a lot of inquiries coming in, a lot of uh, people flowing in. We've got record number of online registrations happen today. It's more than about twelve thousand plus. So we've been really happy and very, really excited about this show. The expo was divided into various zones such as the western zone, rest of India zone, the Maharashtra zone, as well as a special affordable housing zone with more than 300 developers coming prepared with several thousand units ready for sale. There were also lucrative offers such as cashback schemes, stamp duty waivers, vouchers every hour and a chance to win cars every day. 
They build themselves as India's largest property expo with thousands of potential home buyers coming over several days to check properties from Mumbai and across Maharashtra. But are customers really buying? Let's find out. Considering the present situation, yes, I would expect them to bring down their prices because it is skyrocketing as uh, compared to any other uh, city. It seems that the prices are on little bit on the higher side and uh, maybe uh, in the, um, after budget or maybe uh, in the next uh, few months, the prices should come down. High prices is being cited as a reason for companies like Tata Housing and Omkar giving the expo a miss who primarily sale at a premium. But the billion dollar question is, will prices come down? If you see the new launches, we, we are seeing a clear reflection now that uh, the developers are trying to bring down the total ticket size. So the per square foot rate may not have come down, the total ticket size certainly has. So I think developers are responding well to the um, uh, market's demand and I think now it's buyers turn to understand the economics behind the real estate project to know that prices are not going to come down. If you are planning to buy a house, maybe you should decide sooner than later as there are little signs of prices going down. For Ashwini Priyolkar in Mumbai, Radhika Sarkhil for NDTV. We'll take a short commercial break. Coming up on the West Edition, we'll find out why Godbunder Road is turning out to be a promising residential destination in Thane. We will also cover the top three affordable residential hubs of Pune. And on our project tracker today, Vicinia by Shapurji Palonji on Turbe Road, Chandivali. Check out what the project has to offer.